I wish I had known that attending a voiceover training does not make me a professional voiceover artist. Yes, because after I came to realize that there's something more to voiceovers than just being a radio presenter and all of that, I decided to go and learn voiceovers. So I, I registered, I enrolled for a training and I got trained. But guess what, guys? That did not make me a professional voiceover artist. Yes, because a lot of people think that if I attend this training and I get a certificate, that means I am a professional voiceover artist and I need to really, really, really set the record straight on this particular topic. Hi and welcome to the Everything Voiceovers podcast. I'm T-Code, an African voiceover talent from Nigeria and this is my podcast where I take on voiceover topics from an African perspective. In these two-part series, I talk about the things I wish I had known before starting my VO career. Sit back and enjoy this episode. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Everything Voice of Us podcast, The African Perspective. It's T-Code here again for another super duper exciting episode. Huh. Okay, so I know you're wondering why am I super excited today. Well, the podcast is a year old. Is a year old. I mean, we've been doing this for an entire year, guys. You don't know how I feel. I feel so good. I feel so blessed. I feel like I did it. We did it! <laughs> I mean, come on. This is T Code who comes to his studio weekly and tries to do something meaningful. <laughs> you know, try to record an episode and put it out there in hopes that someone listens and the person is blessed, right? Someone listens and the person is able to make a better decision for himself or herself. Someone listens and is inspired and motivated. Someone listens and the person can look up to maybe my guest or a story I've said about myself and draw lessons that will help or benefit the person's career. You know, I come here every week hoping that someone will listen and would care about the voice of our industry. Um, someone would listen and would understand the realities and challenges of voice actors in Africa and in Nigeria, because uh, I'm, I'm from Nigeria, right? So most of the things I talk about, actually, they are more leaned towards the Nigerian perspective of voiceovers. However, I try as much as I can to tap into um, perspectives from um, our African brothers, right? So it's it's been a journey. It's been a solitary journey to a very large extent, to be honest with you guys, because regardless of how I feel, I still need to come into the studio to record, um, regardless of whatever the reality is out there, you know, something has to be said that makes sense and it has to really make sense because I, I'm not just doing this for myself, I'm doing this for the entire continent and the entire world because I am representing to a degree what the African voice talent um, go through and your thoughts and everything so there's a lot of thought process that goes into each episode and you don't want to know the work that goes behind the scene you don't know you don't want to know the plans the oh my god I, I i'm definitely gonna make another episode to talk about what podcasting entails it's not for this episode but then guys i'm really glad that you all have been with me through this journey i know some people listening to the podcast you're probably listening for the first time um, you're so, so welcome to the league. Uh, it's the Everything Voice of Us podcast, the African Perspective, which I started a, a year ago. It could have started like two years before now, but I had this imposter syndrome that spanned for almost a year, if not more. And later, I just decided, I'm going to do this. You're not going to wait for another person to do it because I used to feel like, what am I to talk about the voice of our industry, do a podcast about the voice of our industry. Um, come on, I don't have up to a decade of experience in this. So come on, guy. But then I just realized that I needed to take responsibility. Um, it's my dream and I couldn't sell the dream to someone else and the person will execute it the way I will. And, you know, when I started doing it, I started realizing that, wow, who better would have done this? I'm not saying I'm the best person person to do it i'm just saying that there's a lot of work that he entails and it takes a high level of discipline and commitment and not giving up to continue doing what you do um i've had episodes that we would record and at the end of the day it'll i'll realize that i didn't press the record button i had 
I had an entire conversation with this person, a great, amazing episode, but I forgot to press the record button. It has happened to me twice, and I tell you, it's a very painful experience. That's just one of the many challenges that I've gone through recording this podcast. There are times that I needed to travel out of my zone to somewhere else, to another city to meet a guest. You know, sometimes I'm almost like a researcher in this journey and different experiences that I've had. Sometimes I'm not with my recording device and I have to record. I have to put out an episode. You know, I become a writer. I become, I, come on, guy. We're going to talk about that in another episode. But guys, um, I'm just so excited. In the space of one year, the podcast has done some great numbers. Uh, for a voice of our podcast, I am proud of myself. We're not so much in Africa. We're not so much. In fact, in Nigeria right now, this is the only podcast that exists for voiceovers, like built entirely for voiceovers. So in a year, we've had 34 episodes. This 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 episode you're listening to right now will make it to um, 35. So within the 365 days of the podcast, we've had 34 episodes, 32 guests, almost 2,000 downloads, and we've been able to hit over 27 countries. For me, I feel good and I know that we can do more. <laughs> it's going to get better, right? It's going to get better. But I just want to say a very big thank you to you guys for listening um, to the episodes that we've released. If you've not listened to other episodes, you can do that. There's always something to learn from each episode. Um, thank you, guys. Some people would send emails and those emails are, are what keeps me going. Sometimes I just see how somebody's telling me how he has been blessed from listening to my podcast. You know, I said something that really that really motivated him. Or my colleagues simply telling me that sometimes when they get questions about certain things in the voiceover space, they just refer them to a particular episode of my podcast or something. I mean, that is beautiful to hear. And that really inspires or motivates me, tells me that I'm doing something that makes sense, helping people. And I should just keep going, right? So th there's the ugly side of this. <laughs> um, it's not easy. It's not rosy. Already you can tell, but we keep going. So thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Woo! Okay, okay, okay. Um, by the way, you can keep sending me those emails. Um, just send emails to everything Voice Buzz Podcast, the African Perspective. We also have an Instagram account. That's the at everything VOs on Instagram at everything VOs. And if you want to follow me personally, I am T code underscore 70, T C O D E underscore 70 on Instagram. Yeah. So we can connect and link up. <laughs> Same thing. Okay, guys, uh, let's get into today's episode. <clears throat> I'm excited about this one. We're talking about the things I wish I knew before starting a VO career, a voice of our career. Hmm. What a, what a topic. Things I wish I knew before starting a voiceover career. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that I really wish someone had told me before starting my voiceover career. If the person had told me, if, I, if I'd had somebody to tell me these things, I'd probably have um, <laughs> made certain decisions, right decisions a long time ago. And obviously by now, you know, I would have been ahead of where I am right now. However, um, I started the journey alone. Well, today I'm 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 better. <laughs> I have learned from my errors, from my mistakes, and I'm happy to share the things that I wish I had known when I started, or when I decided that I was going to make this a career, even if it was at the time starting as a part-time career until I evolved to making it a full-time career. And so I, I've, I've written down a, a list of things. I just thought about it this morning. Why not talk about the things I wish I had known before starting my voiceover career? And I started to put pen to paper and I wrote out a long list. So I am not going to try to rearrange them. I'm just going to, you know, go one after the other, the way I've written them. Um, hopefully you guys can learn one or two things. Also, I think on my list, some points were inspired not just by myself, but by things that I wish new voiceover artists or wannabes 
consider or know before they start their career, right? So I think it's it's a bit of both, my own personal experiences and theirs, okay? So let's get right into it. I wish I knew that there is more to voiceovers than commercials. Wow, that's true because when I started voiceovers, I I I I knew commercials to be what voiceovers is or that everything I knew about voiceovers was just circled around commercials. Maybe because I worked on radio or even before I worked on radio, maybe because I was just so interested in radio and TV. So I would watch a lot of radio, I would watch a lot of TV and I would hear these commercials. It didn't really occur to me at first that voiceover artists actually work to do the jobs behind animation. It's not like, see, so we watch animations. We know that people are the ones voicing them, but I just did not feel it. I just did not understand it at the time, right? Uh, So everything around me was commercials, 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 and I was thinking being a voiceover artist would mean being able to do commercials, right? So for a very long time, I would practice to be a v- commercial voiceover artist, if there's anything like that. Do you get it? So I wish I knew that there were different genres of voiceovers. I wish I understood clearly that, you know, you could be a voiceover artist and you aren't just limited to doing commercials. There's the voice acting side of this business where you can get into um, animations, you can go into video games, you can go into audio dramas and the likes. So, uh, yeah, I wish I had known that and I would have prepared my mind. I would have been able to, you know, work on other parts of me. And it's funny that I was also doing animation voiceovers as, you know, for fun, but I didn't understand how, you know, they all work together as a business in one, a voiceover artist. I wish I knew voiceovers was much more than commercials. We have IVRs, we have um, ADR, we have audio description, we have animation, we have um, documentaries, we have um, audio dramas, corporate narrations, and different parts or different types of voiceovers that we've got. So um, yeah, this is one of those things. This is one of those things I wish I had known. Um, yeah. All right. So let's move to the next one. The number two on my list is that I wish I had known that I did not need a certain type of accent to do animation voiceovers. Yeah. And on this particular point, there's a lot I can talk about. Uh, this has happened and it's still happening, but it's going to get better. And what am I talking about? The idea that a lot of us voice of artists we think that we need a particular accent to be able to do animation voiceovers and see i really cannot blame us the reason is because most of us if not all of us grew up watching animations cartoons really we grew up watching cartoons that are done by americans or you know british people or i mean people from different nationalities that are not africans so the kind of accents that we would hear them speak for us those accents are attached to animation so you could almost not imagine an animation that is not you're not hearing a foreign accent you're not hearing an american accent or a british accent or a russian accent either it's an animation or a video game you know so all of the manners of speaking manners of speech being funny being being active everything you knew about animation they were bottled in the american or the different western accents that we saw those animations being done in and for the longest time that has really framed up our thoughts or how we view animation now the truth is that for a lot of us going into voiceovers, we now tend to believe that we need those accents to be able to become voice actors in animation, in the animation genre of voiceover, which is not entirely wrong. It's not entirely right as well. As a matter of fact, I think I should say it is wrong. It is wrong to assume that you need a certain type of accent to be a voiceover artist in animation. Your accent is valid. And there are a couple of animations out there 
that were done by Africans and you could hear the originality in the accents that they used to project the characters. But then those animations are not probably as popular or they've not gained widespread uh, and longevity enough for people to reckon with them as references. So I'm trying to say that as much as you want to do the American accent and different types of accents, if you're representing Africa, if you're showing um, the African perspective or if, if an animation is built around Africa, it has to mirror your accent. Now, let me go a bit deeper. Even when I tend to hear some, in quotes, African-based animation or animations that were built around the African continent, the accent still sometimes does not mirror the original accent of the speaker. Now, what do I mean? There's this Western idea of how Africans sound. I think, and I stand to be corrected, the accent that um, most Westerners reckon with most of the time when it comes to how they think Africans sound is either the East African accent or the South African accent. You know, something that is very close to the Wakandan style of speaking. Which, if you... I mean, you've been listening to me right now. I don't sound like a Black Panther. I don't sound like... um you know, the Mbaku <laughs> and all of those guys. I sound very West African. I sound Nigerian, right? So um, I'm not going to go voice of a, a character that is built or, you know, a character that hails from West Africa and trying to sound like um, an East African. No. So uh, I wish I'd known that we could use our own natural accent to do animations uh, there's a, still a lot i can talk about this but you know that's just it on the surface level and and that's to tell somebody listening to me right now that it's more about your ability to bring that character to life in acting than trying to mimic an accent that doesn't even originally mirror that character except if the character you're trying to you know um voice is a western character like is it's from maybe the character is from the us or from the uk and then if you could do a very good American accent or British accent, that will work. But if it's an African story, an African animation, you need your African accent to be able to give life to that character and originality to that character. So that's number two. Um, the third one is that I wish that I knew how much professional voice actors made in my country and globally. Yes, this is very, very, very true. Because when I started my voiceover career, I was being paid peanuts. And I did not know better. I didn't know the value of what voice actors, you know, were paid. I, I had no idea. Um, well, I didn't even start like a professional. And I didn't start with the idea that um, uh, I was going to do this thing, like the main thing I'll be doing in my life. Then I was... You know, I started with, oh, it's a talent. And I wanted to, ooh, wow, this is going to take me to talking about how I started, like literally started, like the, but then I think I'll reserve that story for another day. So cut long story short, especially if you're working on radio, there, there are high chances that you wouldn't understand the value of voiceovers. How do I mean? When I was working on radio, I would I was working on the bosses who felt that because you're being paid your monthly salary as a radio personality, as a broadcaster and all of that, your voice is supposed to be used to create um, station IDs and um, other voiceover for clients off the radio station, right? So I would do these things for free i mean voiceovers for free and you know station ids and stuff like that for free not knowing that there were people who did voiceovers and they would do the things that i have i was doing for free and would collect a good sum of money to get them done so i, I wish i had known somebody or i wish somebody had told me earlier would that have changed um my engagement with my radio station 
now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not so sure because, again, there was also that part of, and I can't deny the fact that it was somewhat exploitative. Uh, and, and, and this goes out to radio managers and radio owners. The fact that your OAPs have that voice and you're paying them monthly doesn't suggest that you shouldn't appreciate them for the voiceover works that they do for your station. Um, and I think, well, let's not go too deep into this because it also boils down to if they have a contract that permits them to use your voice in certain ways. I'm talking about voiceover artists now. But regardless of that, voiceover jobs are to be paid for, are to be well appreciated. And there needs to be that acknowledgement by radio station owners or managers such that, you know, you don't just use people's voices because they're working for you. There are radio stations that I've worked for eight, five years ago, six years ago, and I go to those states and I hear my voice on the radio station. I'm not being paid anything, nothing. It's It doesn't leave a good feeling for those of us who worked for those stations. When we were doing those jobs, of course, we were passionate about it. We loved the, the sound of our voices on the airwaves and all of that. But with what I know right now, I just feel it's very exploitative. And if there's a better argument as to why we should give our voices to our radio stations to use, you know, to do station IDs and stuff like that, if there's a better argument, I'm open to listening. But as far as I'm concerned, I think it is very exploitative. And maybe these radio station owners, maybe some of them don't know better, which I argue about, you know. But then, okay, let's just leave that, you know, let's leave that right there. I wish I had known how much professional voice actors made in my country. So that way, I would, I would have a sense of, okay, this is what I am worth and this is what I should be paid. But because, of course, like I said, the background I had about voiceovers, which was tied to radio, I didn't even know how much I should, I should charge. I didn't know how valuable what I was doing was. I just had a good voice and I'll just do it for free. So, yeah, uh, I wish I had known that. The fourth thing I wrote here is that I wish I wish I had known that there was a voice of our association in Nigeria with a rate card. Yes, I wish I had known that. I mean, if I had known that there was an association for voice of artists in Nigeria, that would have pricked my curiosity to sort of like find out what they were all about what they were doing, if there's an association, which sounded more like a union, what were they doing actively to make my life better? <laughs> if, okay, or what would they do if I joined the association? What would they do to make my life better? Um, is it open for joining? Um, what are the status quo? What are the structures that, you know, these people have put in place? And yeah, they had a rate card. I, I never knew this. I wish I had known what the rates stipulated that would have helped me to better package myself as a voiceover artist you know with more exposure knowing what to charge my clients and all of that so this is something that i wish i knew when i was going to start my voiceover career another thing that i wish i had known about by the way the association in nigeria is called the association of voiceover artists of nigeria if you go to my season one of the podcast i interviewed the president the current president of the association which is um the popular nollywood icon shegwa rinze i also interviewed some avwa members um in this episode when i talked about the history in this in this season of the podcast when i talked about the history of the voice of our industry in nigeria so you, should, you, you can so you can check for those episodes for references to know more about AVOA, A-V-O-A, Association of Voice of Artists of Nigeria. Anyway, let's move on. So I wish I wish I knew that being a voice actor does not equate to being a script writer. Yes, I wish I knew this. Um, and the reason why I had to put this in the list is that I'm not saying being a voice of artist then exonerates you from developing the script writing skill. But then it's by choice. You don't have to write a script for every client that comes and says, oh, I want you to do this voiceover. They just send you a flyer with all of the information and then you start to piece together everything in that flyer and turn it to a script. It's not your job. It is, it is not your job. It's the job of a copywriter to develop a script and then you read the script as the voice actor. But... Again, this goes back to my background when I started voiceover 
as a broadcaster. Of course, as a broadcaster, you're expected to be able to write and script things down. So your boss calls you into the office and says, oh, I want you to do a promo for this, this, this. Or there's a there's a there's a there's a program that we're going to be starting and launching soon. Create a script. Now, that that's like what happens. That's what goes on in radio stations. And I'm not going to defend. Neither will I attack that idea. It's all part of creativity. In fact, as a creative um, it, there are high chances that you'll understand how better the script should be framed. Well, that depends on your creativity and your professionalism. But what I'm trying to say is that it is not your job. And when I knew this, I then realized that, oh my, I've been doing a free service to clients and what have you for, for the longest time in my career. If I'm going to be doing this henceforth, I have to be paid. I have to be duly remunerated. For that, it is a skill on its own. Because some clients will make you feel like if you're a voiceover artist, you're supposed to write the script. Like, okay, so are you expecting me, the client, to write your job? No, it's not my job. So if you're still if you're listening to this podcast and you think that it's your job to write scripts for your clients, I'm sorry to disappoint you or to let you know today that it is not your job. But if you choose to do that, you can get paid for that as well. All right, so that's one of the things that I wish that I knew before starting my voiceover career. Another thing that I wish I knew before starting was that being an elocutionist does not equate to being a voiceover artist. Hmm, well, it's not like I didn't know this, but I didn't know so much to know that it takes much more than speaking good English to be a voiceover artist. Because back then, if you heard anybody speak decent English, like very well, you just assume that, oh, that person should be a voice. I mean, the, the person should be a good voice of artist. And that's why people get asked that question all the time. If they speak very well or if they have, you know, unique qualities with their voice. Are you a voice of artist? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way because voice acting is a skill is an artistry itself and um, some people naturally you know just flow while some people need to be trained but that aside the fact that you understand the english language you're an elocutionist you understand the the craft of pronouncing words properly and um you just understand the lingua so well and you speak it you know so well very doctored or very very professional, very sweet to the ears, it doesn't mean that you are a voiceover artist. So if you're an elocutionist, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be a very good voice actor. You need to learn the act and the art of voiceovers. Some of us that are voice actors, we're not even elocutionists, we're not diction teachers. We just love the craft and we took our time to study the language to the best and we took our time to pay attention, study the language, study the speech patterns and some other things that are needed to become voice actors. You know, we took our time to go through that process. So if you're an elocutionist and you want to become a voiceover artist, there is more to do. There is more to your voice than just being able to pronounce words properly. And um, I mean, this is I'm saying this respectfully to elocutionists. I know that it takes a lot to also be an elocutionist, but the voice acting profession takes also a lot than just being an elocutionist. So moving on, another thing I noted here is that I wish I had known that attending a voiceover training does not make me a professional voiceover artist. Yes, because after I came to realize that, okay, so there's something, there, there's something more to voiceovers than just being a radio presenter and all of that, I decided to go and learn voiceovers. So I, I registered, I enrolled for a training and I got trained. But guess what, guys? That did not make me a professional voiceover artist. Yes, because a lot of people think that, oh, if I attend this training and I get a certificate, that means I am a professional voiceover artist. And I need to really, really, really set the record straight on this particular topic. I'm not saying that if you go and learn voiceovers, you're not going to learn from the professionals and understand how it's being done. That's not the point. The point is that learning it does not mean you are a professional at it. Even those people that are that are doing voiceovers, 
they are still striving to gain mastery. They are still getting better. I'm still trying to get better. I still aspire to learn more, right? So you have to understand that being a professional at something is beyond just taking a five days course, a one month course, a three months course. There are a lot of lessons that you're going to learn doing this consistently over a long period of time. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to learn, unlearn, relearn. So don't think that certificates that you're being given after attending a voiceover training makes you a professional voiceover artist. To be honest, in my opinion, it doesn't certify you as a professional voiceover artist. I would rather say that what you receive after the completion of that training is or should be a certificate of attendance. Meaning, this certifies that you attended this training. It doesn't certify that you are a professional voiceover artist. So, what that also implies is that if it doesn't make you a professional voiceover artist, then what makes you a professional voiceover artist? It's you putting in the work and not waiting for some people who are established in the industry to put the entire knowledge in your head. Even when they do that, What do you do with that knowledge? It's funny because a lot of times you attend the trainings, but you only um, interface with the microphone a few times. Really, think about it. How many times did you go before the mic to record? It's like someone saying, I'm a professional chef because I attended a training course um, for chefs or upcoming chefs and... The teachers kept teaching and teaching and teaching and we only had a day or two or three days of practicals. And because of that, I am a professional chef. Interestingly enough, I don't even think that example will justify what I'm saying because if you're able to cook a certain dish and you understand the formula, well, that works. It's it's like maths, right? The formula will give you the results. But in in voiceovers, it's not like maths. It's 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 an art. So it's very nuanced. Different scenarios different interpretations for different scripts for different characters so you need to build a level of mastery that is not dependent on what somebody has to tell you before you record i don't know if you if if you understand me so so i wish i had known this that getting that certificate attending that voiceover training does not mean i am a professional voiceover artist it just means that i have learned some new things that I can apply to my voiceover career and become better. I hope you understand. So I'm not telling you to put down that idea that you need to learn. I would encourage you any day, anytime, enroll for some of these trainings. But when you're done with the training, that is when the, the work actually starts. It is the work you now put into yourself after the training that determines if you become a professional in the short run or in the long run, usually in the long run. (laughs) Anyways, um, I wish I'd known that. Another point I noted down is that I wish I knew that voiceover is a business and not just an art. Yes. Um, Of course, from the things that I've explained before now, you could tell that, yeah, I did not see it from that angle. I just saw it as an art. I just saw it as something I love to do. I'll just take my script. Sometimes I'll just do it by myself. I'll write a script and I'll record it. And I'm, I'm just excited about it. While I was working on radio, I'll do it for my radio station and stuff like that. So I wish I had known that it was a business. And even when I had the inclination that I could get paid from this and I was getting a few, a few bucks from doing voiceovers, I still didn't understand the concept of oh voiceover is truly a business it's a different ball game when you start to see voiceovers as a business when you understand that okay what what makes a business a business is it just having a brand name it it's much more than that so by the time i started realizing that if i call this a business my business ought to be registered and recognized by the authorities then i have to register my business I have to pay tax as a business. I also have to put into consideration a business account, invoice, receipts, and stuff like that. So when I realized that voiceover is not just an art, but a business, 
my perspective really changed. You know, I started seeing value. I started saying, oh my, uh, people can just pay me trash. If this is going to be a sustainable business, I need to upgrade it. I need to brand it. I need to make it worthy of whatever I am charging. Even if I speak, even if my voice is the best voice out there, if I don't treat it like a business, people will pay any amount for it. So the moment you start to see what you do in voiceover as not just a skill or talent or an art, but as a business, something changes and you begin to work to upgrade it, right? So I wish I had known this before. I wish I had known this earlier. It would have helped me to prepare my mind that I'm not just going to be a creative, but I'll be an entrepreneur. And then I would have started learning about entrepreneurship. I would have started learning about what it means to be a sole proprietor, you know, and stuff like that. Anyway, I learned that later on when I attended a voiceover training and I realized that, yes, the voiceover craft is not just an art, but a business. And I began to put in the work. I'm sure you're learning a lot from my story already. And um, there's still a lot that I can share with you because I have only shared about half of the points that I wrote down, which means I still have another half to go. So guess what? We're going to be making it a part one and a part two. So this is the part one of the conversation. This is the part one of this episode of the podcast. Next week, I'll continue with the other things that I wish I knew before I started my voiceover career. And guess what? You can also join the train. And there are things that you're probably listening to this and you're an expert or you're a professional and you've been doing this for some years now. What were the things that you wish you knew before you started your voiceover career? I really want to know. So you can send those to me as an email at everythingvoiceovers at gmail.com. I really love to hear your thoughts. I really love to read those things that you wish you knew before you started your voiceover career. So next week, I'm going to be talking about the other things that I wish that I knew before I started my voiceover career. And if I get your messages, your emails, of course, I'll be happy to read them out there. So people can also learn from not just me, but from you as well. Woo! It's been an interesting episode. Another episode on the bag. 35 episodes already. 15 episodes in this season. Once again, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that has been an ardent listener of my podcast. And if you're listening for the first time, I really appreciate your listening. And I'll say don't stop listening to the Everything Voice of Us podcast the African perspective. Like I've said in previous episodes, we're just starting a community on Telegram and I'd love you to be a part of it. Um, It's still very fresh, still very new. It's a platform where we'll be able to interact and um, share updates about what is going on in the podcast. So we're still pulling it together. You can join the Telegram group by clicking on the link in the show notes, right? So that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys for listening and I'll see you next week. Till then, I'll say keep voicing and keep learning. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on everything videos on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode. This podcast is a Coded VoiceOvers production.